Why is Testament of Youth still relevant today? Testament of Youth has is, is, is lasted, lasted the ages as a book because it's an incredible account of the First World War and, it's, and, it's, and, it's, and, and also Letters of the Lost Generation, which is another book, which is a, a collection of letters between Roland and, and, and Vera and, and Edward because it gives us a real insight of, of one woman who went through it, who went through it and saw the men around her be affected by it and, and lived it from home. And, and there's, not, I mean, it, there's a lot of document, documented um, pieces from, from the First World War, but that's a real insight to one person's life from it. And, and that's why it's relevant. And I think, I think it will continue to be read. And I, think it, I hope it will. And I hope this movie will pique people's interests back into turning to the book because it's you know as, as much as we got a lot of it it's it's a, a version of and there's a lot to be read from it which is which is um which i'm sure would, would interest a lot of people now especially on the centenary i think of um probably any time right now the world is changing it's so much going on and i think it's important especially now a hundred years later to be reminded of what we have in history and what happened during the first world war i think it's important because it's one of the few stories when there's a woman telling her side of the story we've seen films read books memoirs of men who were in the war but not so much about the people left behind and for me i also felt it was a insight to how young women just 100 years back lived um, and the differences of the possibilities that they had back then and now I think Testament of Youth is a really powerful story because it's about the universal story of a young girl who wants to make her way in the world and the young do want to make their way in the world. Uh, it's also a story about the universal themes of grief and loss and love as well and those things will never be away from the world. So I think what Vera Britton tapped into so brilliantly was really a connecting tissue, if you like, between her reading audience and the reality of World War I making those experiences feel like a universal experience for all of us. It's an important film because um, it, 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 you know, it's, it, show, it shows what, what is sacrificed when war, when war happens. I think it's an anti-war film. Um, I don't think it's... My, you know, my fear with these things is that they become overly, overly nationalistic or overly patriotic. I can't, I can't stand the glorification of war. And I don't think this is that... I think it's something that really, uh, between uh, Juliet's script and, and James's direction, it really handles it very delicately, and it's a very, very sensitive study of what happened to these real people. Um, so, yeah, I'm really proud of it. This film is an adaptation of a beloved book. Was it daunting to be a part of that? It was. <laughs> I was really nervous. I mean, it was a film that I've been, I fought to get. I, I read the book. It was my agent who gave it about two years before the film actually came about. And um, I read the memoir, fell in love with the, the woman and the story that she told. And I, you know, I read the books and I, um, as a Swedish actress, it was very daunting to take on such a British part. Um, and of course, it was a lot of a lot of um, practical work to be done with my accent. And of course, you know, with um, it was an amazing thing. I got to meet Shirley Williams, Vera's daughter. That was big help. The conversations I had with her, the things she shared. And also, I would say not only the memoir, Testament of Youth, but the letters um, that uh, Vera and Roland and all the other, the men around surrounding her uh, that that correspondence was probably what I used the most. You know, I think as a director of such an iconic book as Testament of Youth, which of course was a wonderful television series, um, is is uh, you know can we match that? I think you know all you can do is try and make it afresh. You shouldn't try and copy what's been done before, but bring it up to speed for a new generation. That's to use the filming techniques, the energy levels, the kind of speech patterns, casting the actors in an age group that would feel more acceptable now than the much older actors who played young in the television series. Um, but there will always be those who loved the book and indeed loved the series who will feel it's not the same 
But you know, nothing should be the same. Why remake it if you're just going to remake it in the same way? What did Colin Morgan tell you about his training at Blind Veterans UK? Well, I, I, I still very <clears throat> clearly re remember when I met him the first, I think it was just the day after or two days after when he came back. And he told me that, you know, I, I knew I was going to have this meeting and go and see those blind veterans. But the first thing they did when I came in, they said, yeah, you're going to be here for a few hours and we want you to experience this the way we do. So they blindfolded him and he said it was a very tough but extraordinary experience to kind of be able to, for them to share it with him in that way. It was a very direct way for him to get an insight of the feeling. I think it was in the early research stages and we, you know, Colin said, oh, you know, they've arranged for me to go off and go to the, the to go see the Blind Veterans UK and, and we and we sort of so that would that'd be really interesting. And he came back and we were like, how, you know, how was it? What, what, was it? Was it good? And there's sort of a, a look came over his eyes of like, it was invaluable. It Because he's obviously playing a, for the second half of the movie, someone who's blinded in the war. And, and when, he, when he went there, what they did, as I understand it, is he, he entered and they immediately put a, a blindfold on him. Um, and he spent the day learning what it'd be like to be a soldier coming back from war and, and how they start integrating them back into into learning how to learning how to deal with being blind and but that i mean for an actor that's really invaluable and but to understand that was was great because they could have just walked him around and told them, you know you could have just walked him around and told them what you did but you didn't you you gave him a very interactive very um sensory uh idea of 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 coming back and, and being of uh, being blinded and I think it, it really, you can see from his performance in the film, it really, it really helped him capture it. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, the, I think the, the main thing he said was it was very disorientating. He'd said it was lovely and that he'd had an incredibly warm reception, but that he had found the whole experience to be quite uh, an awakening, and I know it was invaluable. Well, I mean, Colin's performance as Victor Richardson, the blinded young soldier officer is fantastic really wonderfully tender and very very moving and actually he told me that he'd gone to Hove to visit the grave of Victor Richardson and that he'd taken on some of the speech patterns of that part of the country um, but it wasn't until after filming that he revealed he'd gone to the center for blind veterans and um, and now I see exactly what he what he learned from that I mean there was a moment in the hospital bed when he wanted to be physically like somebody who'd been recently blinded and and he'd watched some of the veterans and he told me then that he'd done a bit of research but not that he'd visited you in person for, for the amount of time that he had done and I think you know that really did inform his performance as Victor Richardson.